Morena, good morning. We'll uh, start this meeting. I'll ask that you all stand for the opening prayer. Almighty God, sovereign in all things, bless this city and its people. Guide us in local government each day that our decisions may be wise and just and magnify your holy name. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to this ordinary meeting of Nelson City Council on Thursday the 19th of November. I have no apologies received, so no apologies to accept. Uh, the confirmation of order of business will be as set out on your agenda sheet. Uh, there uh, will be a presentation from QV um, that's noted in your agenda. I'm expecting that presentation to take no more than 30 minutes, but I'll confirm that with the representative from QV when they arrive. Uh, there, is, uh, there are a number of matters on the agenda that we'll deal with as we go through, but they will be in the order as set out. So the order of business will be as your agenda sheet. If you have any interest to declare, I'll ask that you uh, do that as we get to the agenda item, but a reminder also to keep your register up to date. I have no one signalled to speak at public forum, so there will be no public forum this morning. I move on to item five of your agenda, which is confirmation of the minutes, um, pages 16 to 41. Um, I will signal that I think a correction is needed on page 21. I'll take you to page 21 of your agenda. Uh, before the record of the division, there is some commentary around uh, the support and what councillors felt, and my view is that there are a range of feelings and expressions such that they could not be summarised into two views. So my preference is that the page reads, there are a range of views um, expressed on the amendment, full stop, and the rest is deleted. Because I think there were quite a range of views expressed and reasons, and I certainly don't think that one um, expresses my reason for voting accordingly. Um, it was far too complex to get into two sentences. So um, with that amendment, so with, to read, there were a range of views expressed on the amendment, the rest deleted, and then the record of the division. I am happy to move uh, the minutes as amended uh, for that council meeting. Do I have a seconder? A seconder by Councillor Davey. Um, now speaking to the motion, Councillor Copeland. Well, I just, I'm just I'm not completely clear. I mean, I'm not super attached, but I'm not completely clear of the reasoning behind wanting to amend them. I mean, it's being myself uh, the, proposal, uh, the proposer of the amendment at the time um, and, and feeling that there were insufficient spaces, tranquil spaces for walkers. Uh, I thought that's what we voted on. So I'm just uns unclear as to the reasoning to remove that um, meaning from the paragraph. Uh, Councillor, what I think it does is it tries <coughs> to, to summarise something that was actually quite complex and to bring it down to two views on either side of the coin doesn't reflect what I heard around the table. Um, certainly my reasons for voting had to do with the drafting of policy and the appropriateness of how you draft policy, not for the view expressed in there. So it's been moved and seconded. You can vote against it if you wish. Do I have any else that wishes to speak to the, uh, to the motion? No, in that case, I will put it. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. No. Carried. Thank you. Then we move on to the minutes of the Extraordinary Council meeting, pages 42 through 44 of your agenda. Any corrections or to those minutes. No, moved by Councillor Barker. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Davey. I will put that. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Moving on to item six of your agenda, the status report. Uh, this is um, pages 45 through 51 of your agenda. Uh, do I have any questions on the status report? No, in that case, do I have somebody who wishes to move that we receive a status report? Just one question, Madam Mayor. Oh, it's one question from Councillor Davey. Uh, page 46, the Rutherford Park upgrade upgraded car parking. Could we change the complete to still ongoing? We haven't made that final decision as yet. Uh, we could change that to on, on agenda yes. today. Yep. If you thank prefer. you. I'm happy to move on that basis. Okay, thank you. Moved by Councillor Davey, seconded by Councillor Rainey. 
no, no further question. Question from Councillor Rainey. Forty-eight. It does say that the draft report was programmed for January 2016. I, I'm aware that Council actually isn't going to be meeting until February. I, I, um, I, the only reason I say that is that this has been a very, um, not very, this has been a hasty, <coughs> hasty pro process, you know, a quick process, which is not a criticism. It's, and I just um, was wondering whether in the work program that it could be noted that since Council isn't getting back, does that allow for more time in the process? I'll just seek advice from the Chief Executive. What does that could be the noted? Answer is, is the answer through the Chief Executive is yes. Thank you. Yes, okay, that's noted. Thank you, Councillor Rainey. Further questions, Councillor Noonans. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just going back to page 46 with the Rutherford Park upgrade, in reading the um, resolution, I would have thought that, that that is complete as it reads, unless you've got another one. So the, the item that Councillor Davey, I understand, was drawing our attention to is the second one on that page. And that is, and that the approval be given to initiate detailed design and consenting work for the roading and car park components, <coughs> with the intention of completing the detailed design and the physical works concurrently with the Trafalgar Centre as part of the ECI process. Is that correct? And you consider all of those matters to be complete? I do, mate. I do. I'll just check with the chief executive. Chief executive, are all of those matters complete? Um, Madam Mayor, I think that Councillor Davies point is that until the resolution has been passed, it's difficult to confirm their completion. I certainly feel that the officers feel as though they've discharged their duties. Right. I, I think it can just read on the agenda, on the agenda, um, to today's agenda. Yes. Um, Councillor Noonan, and I did hear somebody else speaking, but I'd prefer that you put your hand up to speak, councillors, rather than shout across the table. Um, Councillor Noonan, I think the issue is just the word complete at the bottom in, in bold. That is what, that's the issue that Councillor Davey was raising, and he said it's not technically complete until we transact that item on the agenda today. Okay, thank you. All right, so it's on the agenda for completion. Any further questions on the status report? No, in that case, um, it's been moved and seconded. I'll put the recommendation. All of those in favour, aye, against carried. Moving on to the Mayor's report on page 52 of the agenda. Um, the Mayor's report is um, self-explanatory, um, and I do thank again the um, efforts of Nelson City Council officers um, for the royal visit. Um, it was um, a, a great effort and um, really appreciate all the voluntary hours that went into that. There's one further item that I want to update you on um, in relation to a verbal update in the Mayor's report, but I won't be able to do that until 1 p.m. Uh, after 1 p.m. this afternoon because it relates to an embargoed report. So um, if we're still meeting, then I will speak to you about that after 1 p.m. Um, Councillor Copeland. Thanks very much. Um, I was very um, heartened to see the CBD enhancement panel taking shape. I'm just wondering, could you give some um, explanation as to the scope of the, the work that they're undertaking and some indication of who may be on the panel, if not by name, but perhaps by, by, uh, by professional, um, what would you call it, uh, re the reasonings why they're on the panel. Who's on the panel and, and why was the question I had for myself. Uh, an email went out to all councillors early uh, several months ago, um, or a couple of months ago, asking for you to put forward names for people that you thought had um, an interest in skills for the CBD panel, people that might have an interest in design, in retail, um, people with good strategic thinking. Um, some councillors provided some names and those names were used to um, form the panel. The panel um, names can be circulated to all of you if you like. I'll ask Ms McDonald to do that. We've had one meeting. It was, um, it was a really good meeting. Councillors Noon and, and Councillor Rainey are also um, on the panel. And uh, the uh, scope of, um, uh, of uh, input um, I think is going to be um, very, very useful. Yeah, um, great creative thinkers and uh, we, haven't been very we haven't been prescriptive. Um, they're uh, essentially a focus group of people that are being used to think about um, what capital, uh, the, where the capital works might be applied. Uniquely Nelson are involved in the group as well. 
and uh, but I don't think it's going to be limited to that given the feedback we've had already. But I'm very happy for Ms McDonald will make a note of that to circulate to you uh, the uh, membership from that group and um, happy to discuss that with you outside of the meeting. A follow up question, Councillor Copeland. Um, Councillor, no uh, Councillor Rainey and Councillor Noonan are involved in that group. Thank you. Thank Councillor Rainey, then Councillor. Uh, Madam Chair, for various reasons, would it be possible to note for the administration to note that uh, it probably would be a good idea for those meetings to be put on the full council meeting um, calendar? That's a very good idea. So if we could just add those on to the. And, um, is that right? Um, just check with the AAs have got that. That's fine. Thank and, you. Um, uh, would it be appropriate for other councillors to be able to observe those meetings if they wish? Oh, what, not, what's your view on that? I'm, I'm always think that um, the more the more that councillors hear from members of the community and, and do um, partnership, the better. I okay. have no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no exclusivity around it, and there's no decision-making role. Um, it's a focus group, really. Um, Councillor Laurie. Thank you. I'm just wondering when we're likely to find out what the royal visit cost the ratepayers and whether or not there's any indication at the stage what that sum might be. Uh, Chief Executive. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have no indication of what that sum might be to hand, uh, and it would be reported through the Audit Risk and Finance Committee in the next corporate report um, in the normal course of events. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? That's fine. All right, so thank you. I'll just move that the report be received, but note that I will have... Uh, just a verbal update on a matter to give you after 1pm this afternoon. Um, do I have a seconder? Thank you, um, Councillor Barker. I'll put that, that all in favour. Aye against carried. Now, our next item on the agenda is the QV revaluation presentation, and I will invite uh, Gail Smiths to join the meeting, and also um, Richard Clough. Good morning. Good morning, welcome. Hello, how are you? Now make, um, make yourself comfortable there. The microphone is a press on and off. If the light's on, it's going. Thanks. All right, thanks. thank you. Hello. And you've got a, we've got a PowerPoint presentation, Gail, that you're going to yes, run thanks. through. Thanks for having me here. Right. Yeah. Thank you. What, what I'll suggest, councillors, is that um, we have the presentations and you hold questions till the end. Is that you comfortable no, with that, Gail? I'm comfortable with that. Great. Um, very aware that you've got a very full agenda, so we'll probably go through it fairly quickly, right. but very welcome to have questions, um, so we'll just go to it. Um, I'm Gail Smith, so I'm the revaluation manager for QV, and Richard Colt, um, our QV's manager based in, in Nelson. So what we've been doing, um, we've been working on your Nelson revaluation for the, um, probably about the last four or five months, and um, this is the results of it. So these are the figures that you'll be using for your rating. Um, come 1 July next year. So what we look at when we're doing this presentation is basically giving you a focus on where the value movements are so that you can then turn around and handle it as far as how you're going to strike your rates. So I mean that's primarily the focus of what this is, but um, this time round for, for your Nelson revaluation, it's a fairly much a good news story. So, um, yeah. So, so what we've I've got here is a graph showing um, the how the Nelson residential property market has moved. You've got all of these on your um, on your handouts there, so probably you've got all your facts and figures there. So I probably won't delve too much into it. What we're seeing is, I mean, Nelson traditionally over the last 10, 15 years hasn't seen a lot of residential property growth. So we're actually seeing a wee bit of a lift. Nelson being that lower line, that red line and um, the national line which still continues to drive quite steeply but that is very much driven by the Auckland market. Um, the Christchurch market which has always been said to be a fairly heavy driver and that has probably slowed down a bit but the Auckland market is still up there. So, so what we're actually seeing with a lot of the cities that haven't seen a lot of movement like your Wellingtons and your Hamiltons and those sorts of things, they're all sort of moving in the last three or four months as, as your Nelson property market is. It's lifting as well. So, so what we're seeing there, you're seeing a, seeing a lift, and I mean, percentage-wise, it's not actually showing the full full story because what we've seen is the lower valued houses, say the under three hundred thousand dollar houses, might be going up, say ten to fifteen percent in value as that lower end of the market comes up, and perhaps your upper end of your market, sort of five seven hundred thousand, might be showing 
only a slight growth, perhaps two, three percent. So I mean that lower end of the market is very much driven by um, your first home buyers, your low interest rates, migration, um, investors, all, all trying to get into the market. So that is so what you'll find is when people get their valuation notices, the lower end will be a higher percentage, and it actually shows through in some later slides through the um, through um, with when we do a breakdown by suburbs. So I mean that just basically sums it up with the higher percentage increases are to the lower priced housing. So and as far as your sections go, I mean we're looking at a, a, a slight rise in section values except perhaps some of the hill suburbs and this is probably as a result of um, the higher cost to build on the hills. In your business sector, again, we're not seeing a lot of change in, in values overall. Some of the properties <coughs> that perhaps are earthquake prone buildings and have a lot of expense expected, they will see obviously see a bit of a lowering in values from their 2012 values. All these percentages we're talking, we're talking a three year break because the last three valuations 2012 um, to this one. So we're not talking annual change, we're talking three yearly change when we're talking the percentages. So business sector not not showing a lot of lot of change. I mean, there's some areas of your CBD um, where there's a bit more higher vacancy levels. Um, we've got lowering values in those areas as well. But and the commercial accommodation not showing a lot of change there either. You don't have a lot of rural properties. Um, most of your rural properties. We've only got 34 rural rating units. Um, a lot of your rural sort of properties are lifestyle and being at the higher level have moved a wee bit like your higher level um, residential properties. Right, what I've done here, this is just showing your, your growth in your district over the, over the last four revaluations. Um, you'll see from 2012 to 2015 it's actually about a 12% change there, but we're actually looking market movement 8%. So. That other 4% really is your subdivision work, your new building work and that that's actually given that lift. So I mean it's, um, so we are actually comparing previous revaluation to current revaluation market movements 8%. So what that's showing there is, um, needs a few more zeros on there, but um, Nelson as a whole is worth 11, about 11.5 billion and your land sector there is about 4.5 billion. So, and it's good to see, always good to see growth. So your number of rating units, um, we're talking about a 2% growth in the number of rating units from three years ago. So it's a relatively small amount of growth of extra rateable properties. But I mean, that's the same as what it was, a 2% growth from that 2009 to 2012. So a bit of growth, but um, so you have got a few more rating units where you're spreading the load over. So there's our overall movement. So, I mean, obviously your residential sector with 19,000 properties um, is your biggest rating sector there. So overall we're looking at an 8.7% growth in capital value and your land value is at 4.2%. I mean, my understanding a bulk of your rate is, is value-based rates is on the land value content. Yeah. So we're not looking at huge, <coughs> huge changes there in value, but we have got growth in, in those main sectors, that residential. That other sector, I'll just I'll just talk to that a wee bit. Um, actually, I'll just show you on another graph to that direction. With the other sector there, it actually includes your utility properties. So your utility properties are the likes of your um, chorus, your council assets like your stormwater, wastewater, those sorts of things. And I'll show you on a later graph. There's actually we've got a big growth factor there, but we're only talking a relatively small amount of property, so that's why that's distorted, that 13.5%. So what it's showing here, you'll see these pie graphs on there, this is just your change of the pie of your values. So there, your, your main drivers there, you've got your other property, which is your utilities, your schools, all those sorts of things, and your residential are now compared to that next one, a slightly larger piece of the pie. So your residential for 2012 is 69.5% and it's 69.89%. So we're not talking a huge amount of difference, but the other ones as part of your, your whole rating base have actually 
a slight modification, slight downwards movement. And that actually is the same as the trend through the land values. Sorry, the colours here haven't come up brilliantly. Um, this is just showing the percentage change compared with the 2012 value levels for it by sector. So you can see there the um, residentials around that 8%, um, some of your rural sectors, slight <coughs> drop, obviously for dairy for, for obvious reasons. Um, but they're not, the rural ones aren't a big part of your base. Your utilities there at 24% lift. We're only talking um, 46 utility properties, and we have got one of those, like Chorus, has actually gone up quite a lot because of the, the um, increase in, in what they've in year, year fibre that's gone to town. So, but then again, most of those utilities have zero land value because they're. Um, so, I mean, you'll have your own rating policy to deal with, with those properties. So, I mean, what it's showing is, is residentials. Is, it's got growth there, so. These are your, basically, your suburban breakdowns. I mean, they're fairly broad suburban groups, but, um, I've got a pointer there. Um, what it's showing you, if you look at your lower average values, are the higher percentages. So if you look at, um, say, the Nelson South Bishopdale area, and the Wakatu Innisbrook areas, I mean, where you're under 400,000 is your average capital value has seen the biggest percentage crop increase. So that's showing how the, the lower end of the market has actually come up at a greater rate. But you've got all those figures there in, in front of you there. Um, once again, showing the business sector. I mean, these are averages, so obviously some parts will, have, will be coming back because of, say, vacancy issues, earthquake-prone issues, that sort of thing. And your lifestyle properties being your lifestyle rural tend to track along similar to your to your better residential areas. And so your rural properties, but these aren't a significant part of your district. But um, through the South Island this year, there's six districts under revaluation. Um, we've still got um, to get finalisation on Southland and Grey districts. So I haven't got the Grey figures there because we haven't actually done the presentation to their councillors yet. But the, um, So what that's showing is um, Nelson's actually doing pretty well residentially. Uh, your Ashburton and your Selwyns have obviously been driven a bit by the, the Christchurch market. Um, so overall we're looking at an 8% growth your Ashburns and your Selwyns also, their, their rural market has actually lifted their overall significantly and you haven't got that part of that. But. Today, actually, the, the rating valuations have been posted out. They start from today, so um, they have been available for viewing. I'm not sure if they're at your counter or they, they're at your, on your website. From middle of last week, they have been available for the public because that's a legal requirement. You had to have them displayed from the middle of last week. Um, but people are getting their owner's notices as from today. So included in this is, is this um, leaflet, Understanding Your Rating Value. And in there, there's actually like a PIN number. So they can actually go on to the QV webpage and they can have a look at other property values. Um, and they can also, I think, get up to 10 sales. So what this is all aimed at is getting um, transparency that they can check that their values are okay. So this is a service we've offered to Nelson before and we've had pretty positive results. So that, that's available and that leaflet will be in their owner's notices. Right, so the, objection, the notices get posted out today and people have a right to object. So the objections close the 15th of, 15th of January? Yeah. Yeah. 15th of January. Um, we do encourage if people aren't happy, they can call out, there's an 0800 number there for our call centre. Um, generally, a lot of them are just a general explanation as, as to what's happened with the values. But if they do feel they want to lodge an objection, it can be lodged online. We would prefer them online because we get all the data that way, we can respond quicker to them. Um, so, I mean, 
uh, and, it, and it's probably easier for them to lodge online if, if they're not happy. I mean, last time for Nelson, we got round about the industry average, round about that two percent objections. We tend to, when markets drop, we tend to get a higher percentage of objections these days because people, it is their equity. They like to like to see growth in their property. Um, so. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see, but generally we're, we're around about that two, two and a half percent for the Nelson area. So as far as timeline, your values are a snapshot in time, so they're as at the market on 1st of September 2015. So we assess these values and um, audited through the Office of the Value of General actually do an independent audit of them. So they went through that audit process with approval about a fortnight ago. Um, we put the public notice in last week. We displayed you displayed the values last week. They're being posted from today, and you will be using these for your rating um, from July. So what we'll be aiming to do is, as soon as those objections close, we'll be starting to work on those objections so you've got them ready so you can strike your rates. Right, so that's just a fairly quick run through. So happy to take questions. Thank you, Gail. And um, look, thank you for the um, mail out that you've got to do this year. I think that's going to be really useful for people and that opportunity to have a look at some um, other sales is um, going to be very, very valuable information. So I um, really appreciate that uh, customer service focus. I've got questions from uh, Councillor Fulton, then Councillor Ward. Uh, thank you. Through the Chair, just a really quick question. How often does an objection result in a change? Um, what do I actually should have, should have put this just because I haven't got those here. Some of the objections will be for work that we haven't been aware of, like building for that haven't needed a building consent. Like a lot of the work will be I put a new kitchen and have you included it? Right. Okay. So I mean, obviously that will result in a change. Yeah. Um, that. Yeah, what, what do you reckon we'd have to change right here for? Um, the vast majority, I think, are probably no change. Right. But there is um, a slight bias towards a slight increase because we become aware of new work that's been done to properties. So it's a chance for people to make us aware of it if they have done new work but without building consent. Right. So re renovation, new debt, those sorts of things. Okay. Thank With you. the building consents, we actually get notified through a council process on a monthly basis of all building consents that have been issued and we also get notified of all new deposited plans through survey. So that actually gets built in, in between general revaluations. But it's that unconsented work that we're not aware of. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ward and then Councillor Laurie. So the bulk of the objections are because their, the values are too low. Last year I did a survey through the country and we were looking about 75% of people wanted their values up. I mean, there's still people that have, you know, they're fronting out with their replacement insurance certificates, um, which of course doesn't actually have any relevance to the, the market worth of their property. So they're fronting out with that and they're, they're a wee bit scared of that compensation type things. But traditionally it used to be about 50-50, half wanted up, half wanted down. But of recent years, it has favoured more people wanting their values increased. I mean, pet banks are looking at them, all sorts of things. So, I mean, and the definition of, of a rating valuation is is what the likely sale price is at that valuation date, which is 1st of September. Thank you, Councillor Laurie. Thank you, Madam Chair. A couple of quick questions. One, through the Chair, what does an objection cost? What does it cost to do that process? Cost us or for you to actually lodge one? The objector, yeah. Nothing. Oh, great. Um, and my other question is, there's a perception through the Chair, there's a perception in Nelson that our commercial uh, rents are really quite high for what people get. And I'm wondering, is that a perception or is that a reality? Do you have any thoughts? Ooh, you might be better to answer that than me, Richard. Mm. Um, I, th I think there are probably parts of Nelson that do have high rental levels, I guess, relative to the rest of the country. Um, but they are, I guess, the... Uh, the prime retail areas, but um, I, I mean, generally, a rental is you know based on market evidence. So it is really a negotiation between the the parties within the market. So they should represent sort of willing lessee lessor. But yeah, there are parts of Nelson that that have high rental levels. Sorry, supplementary, just following up, if you don't mind, Madam Chair. Do, what normally happens in that situation if you have a lot of buildings that are empty for a long time? Do those rents decline? Do they stay where they are? What's the story? 
they do generally. It's a, a market adjustment normally. Uh, I mean, obviously, it, for it to be economic, uh, it needs to work for both parties. So the rents will f they'll flow into, I guess, uh, they'll reflect how a business is operating. Uh, I mean, if, if, a, if, a property, if the rent's too high and the property becomes vacant, then the market needs to respond and those rents need to drop. So there should be market forces in play. Thank you, Councillor Barker. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, two questions. Firstly, the business section of your of your presentation, you're lowering values in, in the CBD and looking at the, the graph on, or the bar chart, I should say, on the capital land value percentage change. So the land value I'm taking from this in the CBD of Nelson has only increased by about 1% in the three years. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. it's been a, a fairly static market. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. and, and one of the things, my understanding of your market too, I mean, you've also got your Richmond competition, you know, for your industrial land available for there yes. as, as well. So, I mean, you, you're, even though you're Nelson City, you, you've got your, your broader areas that um, are also providing industrial and commercial opportunities. Mm -hmm. And similarly, uh, the only two places where the land value has actually dropped is the dairy and pastoral. Is that correct? I mean, we're talking about four properties or something. But right. I mean, it's actually quite interesting how the whole dairy picture's gone this year because when we were looking at the middle of the year, and of course with the dairy dairy payouts reducing, I mean, we most of the values in the big dairy areas, we have actually struck them slightly lower than perhaps the peak. We were sort of looking about 8% or so lower than, mm -hmm. than that peak of values, but we're still actually seeing a significant... For, for main big dairy areas, right. It will big be interesting. change over that three years. Yeah. It will be interesting for us to look at when the individuals to see if what's happening at North Nelson is the same as what's happening in the South of Nelson for the dairy farms. But my final question is um, in relation to objections. Will your exercise be a desktop exercise when someone objects or will you come and consult them and, and have a look at the property? The requirement under the legislation was you've got to have a recent on-site inspection. Um, we don't necessarily look at the interior, it depends on what the issues that are created. I mean if somebody says you've got to have a look inside my property because I have a new bathroom, we would obviously make a thing, but if they say look, my property's, my land value's too high because the site over the road sold for such and such, I mean obviously it won't require an inspection. So um, when a person lodges an objection we send an acknowledgement of receipt um, and then we endeavour to contact them, it may be in the form of an email, it may be a telephone call, it may be on site. We generally cold call when we visit on site unless there's a particular requirement to get into the property. Um, and then you, you, you cold call, did you say? Generally, yes. You don't let people know you're coming? Councillor, can I just ask you to make sure that you make eye contact with me about a number of questions? Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> through that, the, that, through that, the chair. the last question, yes. Yes. Um, generally our process is to cold call, yes, and then we would make follow-up appointments if required. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Worship. Now I have uh, Councillor Skinner, Councillor Davy, Councillor McGurk. <coughs> Through the Chair, just one question. Uh, thank you, Gail. So just um, make sure I've got it clear on how it affects the, the rate payers and they're paying their rates at the bottom line, uh, rather than just the value of a property. So the allotment of, of rates, if I read this right, see so Washington Valley, Abraham Heights, the land value hasn't gone up on page 7, hasn't gone up. Other areas have gone up 7 8%. So if I understand this right, when you're divvying up, when we are divvying up the rates, their rates would go down, all being equal, and um, the wood, etc., bishop out, etc., would go up. What's that? Am I got my understanding how that works? Correct. Sorry. Yes, I mean, but everything else to, being equal. Yeah, you've got to look at the structure of your rates because you have other charges that, that come yep, into. But, it, but assuming assuming but rates are so similar. Part of that, yes. For so next time, it. some will, some so the, the, the winners as far as their rates that they pay will be the Washington Valley, Abraham Heights. And those who'd be paying more in proportion will be the, the other areas. Yes. So, I mean, what, what it is is, I say, we tend to go back to that pie. Yep. So, I mean, if your value goes down, it doesn't mean to say your rates go down. If everyone's goes down, then everyone's yeah. will be equal it's pay. Everyone went up, everyone's paid equal. you still need that dollars to so run, your, run your city, so it's how that pie is divided. So we've got a bit of a seesaw action here. Washington Valley, we should see a reflection on the amount of rates drop in their areas. Should be but I, I would suggest that it's still, rating-wise, it's... Mm really a fairly low impact sort of a revaluation. Yeah. Very good, thank you. Councillor McGurk. The question's been asked and answered. 
Any further questions? No further questions. Well, thank you, Gail and, and Richard, for coming in uh, and, and presenting today. Uh, it's obviously quite a complex process, uh, and um, I'm sure that uh, the uh, ratepayers will be hopping onto our website and having a look to see what their rating valuations look like. Um, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. All right, councillors, now we're going to move on to item 10 because I'm just waiting for uh, an officer to be available for item 9. So we'll move, we won't do item 9, we'll come back to that. And we'll move on to item 10, which is the review of the District Licensing Committee um, report on pages 62 through 65. Um, I will take the report as read. Um, I'll just check to see with uh, Ms Bishop whether there are any corrections that need to be made to the report. I invite you to come to the table. So, and we'll take it as read. Are there any corrections that you wish us to be aware of? No, thank you. No, thank you. All right. In that case, I will take questions on the report. Councillor Ward. I noticed that uh, we're a councillor has submitted the text of the Through the chair, that's that's correct. There could be a perceived conflict of interest for other councillors to sit as panel members of the DLC. Uh, uh, no, that would be comment. I just I just found that a little strange when I read it that that because a councillor has put in a submission, the rest of the council uh, councillors uh, would be deemed to be like possibly deemed to. To cons consider that person favourably, I wouldn't have thought that was the case. Uh, Ms. Bishop, do you want to just clarify what the reason is for for taking that approach? I think it'll be helpful. Uh, yes, so the reason is basically to be consistent with other types of um, activities that the council do in general. If a council is applying for a RMA consent, for example, that goes to a hearing, we have independent commissioners to hear that to provide a neutral basis so everybody feels they are getting a fair um, hearing and so the same applies for the DLC committee. Uh, question Councillor McGurk. Uh, thank you Madam Chair. Uh, I'm aware that uh, LGNZ are seeking some comment on the Sale and Supply of Alcohol Act, uh, in particular our commentary around the composition of our district licensing agencies and the special licensing regime. Uh, are we likely to be, or is this council likely to be making any any comment or to LGNZ in the in the review of the, that act? Um, just before we answer, is that relevant to the matter well, in front of us? Does it, it just, if I could finish, Councillor McGurk, does it go to compositions mm. or time well, frames? Uh, picking up on what Councillor Water said, is the the issue here does actually highlight a number of number of issues, particularly around conflict of interest, um, whether we have a sufficiently large pool of um, hearing uh, people to he hear hearings and I'm just wondering if that's an issue that all right is whether that's an issue as part is of that, the is review. that an issue and is it one way of rect and one way of rectifying is looking at the amendments to the act in terms of composition reading reading the, what the reason is the reading report is that we seem to have a reasonably large number of hearing commissioners but they are being excluded for all kinds of reasons you know members uh, elected members uh, making a objection, so that excludes any other elected members to sit on the panel. Uh, a, a relative of a, uh, a hearing made a, an objection, that, that excludes that one. We actually had to go to our neighbouring uh, council to get two more commissioners. Ms Bishop. Right, um, so through the chair, yes, we, we have um, actually made a well, it's feedback to local government New Zealand about the issues that we see as um, might need reviewing for, for the sale and supply of alcohol. The issue about um, conflict of interest and composition of the um, district licensing committee has not been raised with local government New Zealand. Um, personally, I feel is the act does enable um, non-council members to be there and we do have a sufficient balance, if you like, of non-council and council members on the, on the committee. So it just depends on what application comes up. You can't 
I, in my view, you can't just have, you know, one type of composition to cover everything. Yeah. So I don't think changing the act is needed um, because it does allow for that mix of composition. Thank you. Further questions? Um, any further questions? No, in that case, um, Councillor Barker, if you wish to move. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, I wish to move it. Uh, I do so as the Deputy Chair of the District Licensing Committee, and consequently I just want to say that um, I believe that the, the committee has carried out its duties in a, in, a, in a good manner. I've been impressed with our Chairman, Mr Oak Blakey. Uh, we've had, we've had um, meetings with our colleagues in Tasman and Marlborough on two occasions and uh, generally kept on top of things. The only thing that is a little strange is the fact that uh, the points that have been mentioned about conflicts of interest. And the only other thing I'd mention in moving this is that I, in terms of the resolution, I'm quite happy with what's there, but I think in reality what will happen when the next election occurs, the council of the day will look at what's on the new council, who's got qualifications, and the extra members that are on it at the moment are past councillors. So if there are any past councillors coming December, any more new past councillors, there may be a changing of the, of the hats. So um, the resolution's fine as it is, but I think when we get to 2018, election results, it's time to have a look at it, when the inaugural council sets all its new um, positions for its members. So well, that, happy to move. Will that be consistent with the uh, what's there and what's been moved? Do I have a seconder? Um, seconded by Councillor Fulton. Uh, Councillor Ward speaking to the motion. Yes, on, on the question of, of conflict of councillors, because another councillor puts an objection, in an objection, could we have another opinion on that? Um, it seems to me that that's, that's quite an, a strange one. And, and I'm thinking that it might apply, for instance, when uh, a councillor decides to put a submission in, on a hearing, uh, you know, independently of their council position, which is possible. Uh, and th th would that disqualify uh, other councillors from participating uh, on a panel? Councillor, I, th I think the officers of uh, Ms. Bishop answers there, if you're talking about a resource consent hearing, the answer is yes, that there would be a perception of bias issue, and that was why we have an independent panel. That's been the policy of this council for as long as I can remember. But if you'd like the um, uh, Ms. Bishop just to give you the, um, set that out for you, um, uh, I'm sure I, she I, could I do I've that. I've heard what you said, I just, I just find it a little strange um, and and I if, if that's if that's a you know if we've had legal opinion on that then I, I'll accept that but uh, I would like a second opinion on it yes well I, I Councillor Ward I'm, I'm at this point not prepared to direct the Chief Executive to CK um, second legal opinion on that matter but what I will do is ask that the Chief Executive um, set out the advice that we have to date. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, speaking to the matter, no, thank you. Uh, in that case, I'm ready to put it. All those in favour? Aye. Aye against carried. Now, I'll just check with the Chief Executive to see we're ready to go back. Not quite ready to go back to item 9, so we'll move on to item 11, which is the draft <coughs> Health and Safety and Management Governance Charter. Now, um, I did email you uh, prior to the meeting to say that I had seen the recommendation. Um, I feel this is a particularly important issue um, for, uh, well actually for any business owner, um, director or um, member of local government, um, for all parties to actually understand the obligations around this and I would quite like to move this to a workshop process now. Um, Gail I think may have a uh, recommendation ready to do that um, on the screen on the here, so which was that if we receive the report, so this is what I would I will move actually at this point, and I'll, um, I'll move it, and we'll, then we'll get the officer to come to the table in case you've got questions. Um, that the uh, we receive the report, and that this item lie on the table until a workshop has been has been held. So in other words, so we can have a longer debate discussion around it. So, 
okay, that's fine. So, so let's just decide, just so that we know where we're heading for this. Now, we're pages 66 through 91, and in light of the fact that I'm suggesting we move it to a workshop, I'm happy to invite the officer to the table to take questions now, or we can leave that for a workshop date. It's any, are there any questions that people would like to put of the officer now? Are you happy to leave it? All right, in that case, um, we, we have the report, we're receiving the report, and it will be, um, the item will lie on the table until a workshop has been held. That's been moved and seconded. Um, debate, um, Councillor Ward. Oh, it's been seconded. I think it's already been seconded by Councillor Noonan. Thank you. In that case, I will put it. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. Now moving on to item 12, which is the external appointment remuneration for subcommittee involvement, pages 92 to 103 of the agenda. <coughs> and I'll invite the report writer to come to the table. Good morning, Shaley and Penny. Uh, now, first, are there any corrections that you need to make to the report? It stands, and we'll take it as read. Any questions for the officers? Thank you, Councillor Davey. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Fulton. Um, no questions in relation to the report. It's pages 92 through 103. No questions. In that case, it's been moved and seconded. I will put the recommendation. Uh, oh, my apologies. Um, speaking to the motion, you wish to speak to the motion? Good interruption, councillors, just in time. Councillor Noonan and then Councillor Barker. Can't go to sleep on here. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just to, I do support the recommendation. I just want to make the comment that I would not like uh, that the appointment, the, the appointees have actually taken on a larger workload than first envisaged, and I, I just don't, would not want to see them out of pocket. Um, and that's just the comment. But I think in the sense of it, I do support the motion. Thank you. Councillor Barker. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, the, uh, the members requested a, a look at it because what they ended up um, doing was possibly more than they anticipated. But I've got to say that it was a very good exercise carried out by our staff to look at the relativities between what we're doing here and elsewhere in the country. And uh, informally, when I've spoken to the external members about the result of this, they will understand how we are moving today. So uh, thank you to the officers. Thank you, Councillor Barker, um, and thank you to the officers for a um, very good report. Uh, no further debate. In that case, I will um, put... I'm sorry, there is debate. Councillor Laurie wishes to speak. Question, yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, it is a, um, these external appointments are a new move for the city, and there is a question out there in the community about these people who are not elected and they are involved in decision making. And I just wondered if there was any, um, had there been any understanding or monitoring of what public opinion was on this move? Do we have any idea? Have we had any public feedback to this step that we've taken? Um, I'll check with the Chief Executive. I'm not aware of any public feedback. No, I am aware of the Office of the Auditor General's advice on this matter, which supports what we have done. Um, that's the, the advice from the Office of the Auditor General, particularly in relation to audit matters. Right, um, no further debate. In that case, I'll put it. Put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Uh, I'm actually going to go on to item 13, just to deal with the schedule of council meeting. And get those ones out of the way. All these, well, we've got Miss Langley here. So we've got the schedule of council meetings, pages 104 to 115 of your agenda. Uh, Ms Langley, are there any, this is a very complex matter and I thank you for the work that you've put into it, um, are there, are there, and there may be, are there any updates that you need to make to the report at this point or have we got it uh, correct at this point in time? <laughs> uh, thank you. No, I believe we have it correct at this point in time. Um, I'm not aware of any outstanding issues. Thank you. All right, that's good. Uh, just in relation to this report, there is uh, commentary in the report in relation to the uh, report back that we do on our external appointments. And we have those at the moment set up as, um, a, as a council meeting. I'd just like to ask the 
Council, my preference is that we actually do that as a, um, a less formal process than a meeting, which has to be, um, we have to give, go through all the meeting procedure over. I'd much prefer, I think we'd get a more useful process if we did it as a workshop. Um, it has, um, so that's something that we can address as we go through the year, but I just wanted to test that and seek some feedback from you today as to your, pre as to your preferences. Um, you, I'm getting nods that you're comfortable to deal with that with a less formal process and do it as a workshop. It just allows a bit more discu easier discussion. All right, thank you. In that case, um, questions for Ms Langley in relation to Councillor Rainey and then Councillor Ward. Madam Chair, I appreciate the fact that um, some consideration has been given under 5.16 on page 106 to Council Free Weeks to take into account um, I guess those councillors who have school aged kids, and I just want to point out there are six councillors who have kids who are at school, and indeed I think it would be fair to say that five of the councillors have kids who are under the age of about 12. So it is actually quite important that we do try and achieve some time with our kids during holiday time. So I do appreciate the fact that that has been taken into account and that, um, and that January has been kept relatively or indeed completely free at this stage, and I hope that's case that will continue. I would just like to um, point out though that uh, under 5.16 it says that three weeks free of council and committee meetings have been set aside to co coincide with school holidays but that actually is not quite correct because indeed there isn't the third holiday so to speak in the year and I'm not sure of the exact dates but it's September October isn't mentioned and that and I just would like um, Ms Langley perhaps to consider that. And I, I haven't actually looked closely at October or September. All right, we'll give Ms Langley a moment to look at that. So what you're just Is it election time? Is it passed? Are we out, out of at that point? Oh, well, then that's easily cleared up. <laughs> Maybe. We might have an eternal holiday at that point, Madam Chair. I'll, we'll thank you, thank you, thank you, Councillor Rainey. Um, yes, we, 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 we've set this for the um, triennium, but becomes potentially somebody else's um, concern after that date. Um, Councillor Ward. By and large, these dates aren't going to change too much, I take it. I mean, the, the, they may get juggled, but generally speaking, it's one meeting juggled for another meeting rather than uh, uh, meetings taken off entirely. That does happen sometimes. Well, I'm just thinking, I fill in my paper diary, <coughs> you know, <coughs> the fire as far ahead as I can, I can probably reasonably safely assume that there will be others, but these dates are, are unlikely to be left clear. Uh, through the Chair, yes, that's correct. I would expect that everything that is scheduled in here will be used. Thank you. Um, I think this year that we've, we've managed to stay staying reasonably close to the calendar that we, we set up. Um, but it has been a challenge to um, get all of the business of council transacted um, in the time that we have available. Um, there is a lot of business to transact in the year and there have been matters that have come up where uh, we've needed to have workshop time. We've also had the Nelson Plan Review which has consumed a lot of time for councillors this year. So, and that will continue. Any other questions? No, in that case, it's, do I have, has it been moved, Gail, and seconded? It hasn't been moved. Okay. Moved by Councillor McGurk, seconded by Councillor Copeland. Um, thank you, Ms Langley. Uh, no debate. No debate. In that case, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Aye, against, carried. And I think while well, we're just dealing with these um, administrative type matters, we'll go on to item 14, which is the administrative matters report, pages 118 to. 119. So there's just some updates in there. Um, I think Ms um, Langley will be able to answer questions on this, even though she's not the report writer, but I'm not aware that there are any um, corrections that need to be made to the report. No corrections. Are there any questions? No questions? In relation to this matter? Um, it's no questions. Um, there's just one update that I would like as we go through this, this just the to the, for the Chief Executive to speak to, 
at this point, and it will come back to you um, in the future. But as we're in a meeting, I might as well deal with it now. Um, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Headley. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Madam Mayor, the update on delegated authority to approve the Trafalgar Centre packages, I'd just like to draw to your attention that the communications team are currently preparing an update on the Trafalgar Centre, and it will set out the work that has been done to date and the budget matters around that and the work that is forecast. And I really want to draw your attention to it because there will be some detail in it. You will find it useful um, in dealing with your community and I would imagine it would be out next week. Okay, thank you. All right, and the, all right I just want to note just, just a moment, um, Councillor, and you've moved Councillor Davy, haven't you? All right, I'll second, so just so we've dealt with it. Councillor Noonan, I'll thank still you. take questions. Though. So just the question on that, on 4.3, um, was that delegation just for that one time? Um, uh, Chief Executive? Sorry, Madam Mayor. Um, no, the... I'm sorry, you've... I'm going from memory, uh, but the memory is that authority was delegated to the Mayor, Chair of Works, Chair of Community Services and the Chief Executive, or their deputies for all of those matters relating to the Trafalgar Centre that need to be signed off. So if there is further work, and I believe that uh, Mr Kirby indicated at the time that he would be coming back to us for further approval, that would be referred to that group. If I may. Follow-up question, Councillor uh, Noonan. Right. So will the rest of the councillors be aware and the public be aware of those items as they arise? Um, Madam Chief Executive, Madam Mayor, if I can just firstly confirm that my memory is correct, because that's highlighted in paragraph 4.9, and secondly, um, the meetings are typically, well, we've only had one, but I think it was called on a 24-hour notice, and it would be that the uh, delegated authority that has been exercised will be reported to Council as it has been in this instance. Okay, Councillor, so we are, as discussed at the time we set this up, um, it has to happen quickly because otherwise the project is delayed and it was um, all of the uh, delegated persons were able to be present. You will note in your agenda if you go back to pages, page 22 of the agenda you'll see the minutes for the Trafalgar Centre Northern Building and you will see that the same process is to apply for the turnout costs for the Northern End. Right, so that will continue. Any further questions on the report? Okay. No further questions, I think it's been moved and seconded. I will put the motion. All those in favour? Aye, against, carried. All right, councillors, what I'm going to do today, because I, I just want to make sure that we um, move through fairly quickly, I'm just going to take a five minute break. So um, grab a cup of tea now. I'll take probably another um, five minute break at about 11 o'clock, um, depending on how we're going with the agenda. I'm just conscious that we do have a lot to get through today. So it's going to be a um, short breaks as opposed to a long morning tea, and then we'll resume.